Alright, here's a video on one of the remaining relics of my center fire bench rest days. This is uh, my relatively nonconformist ideas on a railgun design. So let's look at a couple of features. Obviously it's underslung, uh, there's no barreled action in it, but I always felt they were a little more comfortable to shoot that way. This gun has the auto return to battery, spring, spring return system. Pull it back here and then we'll let it go. The rails are aligned basically to the point of precision that anywhere on the position of the rails fore and aft, the gun is pointing exactly at the same same place on the target. Another interesting feature, this is the integrated scope rail. Uh, this is for a left port, right bolt action, right hand twist barrel, typically used with a PPC. And it's mounted, as you can see, I guess you can see the V-way there, yeah, right there. It's mounted three quarters of an inch to the right and about three and three quarter inches high. That is the center line of the bore of the barrel to the center line of the scope. What that does is it crosses the, the line of sight will cross the uh, point of impact both at 100 yards and 200 yards exactly. Therefore, all you have to do is adjust the parallax. This barrel uses a barrel block with a Delrin sleeve. It's a board block, not a V-way. Uh, another interesting feature is the post elevation uses a split lock type engagement on the threads rather than a check nut or a T-handle. The same thing with all the leveling legs. The split clamp basically gives you a very solid lock on that thread. Whereas a check nut, the threaded bolt can actually hunt around underneath the check nut as the loads are uh, dispersed on it. You won't see this problem on the legs on a conventional gun with check nuts or jam nuts if the legs are very short from the base to the bench top. However, if you have to crank the legs out some, you'll probably see some problems with it. Another interesting feature of this gun is it uses an integrated cider cam. I don't know how well you can see it, but basically it flips that up and down. This is the fine-tuned elevation adjustment. So any adjustment you make on the cider target, when you flip the cam, there would be on the cider, you flip the cam, and it's automatically transferred to the record target. Same thing with the windage. If you crank the windage back and forth on the cider, you can flip it to the record, now it's on the cider, flip it to the record, then it's automatically transferred to the record. In other words, if you figure out where you got a hold on the cider to, to finish your group out because of condition change, all you got to do is flip that cam and that hold is automatically on the record and you pull the trigger. Another interesting feature is the use of, I don't know how well you can see it, in between that the there's a needle thrust bearing there there's also needle thrust bearings on the spring on each end also the spring is being pulled in the compression rather than pushed in the compression most rail guns they push a spring to compression with the pivot shaft of the adjustments this one pulls the spring on the pivot shaft and therefore it has far less hysteresis. 
Well, hysteresis, if you don't know what that fancy word means, is basically when you make an adjustment on a threaded device and you move it exactly to where you think you want it and then you stress it with a load or whatever, such as firing a gun, then it settles into the position it really wants to be in. So this gets critical if you're going to make a change while you're on the record target. This is similar to clicking a scope. Anytime you have a threaded joint involved, hysteresis is always a gremlin. Now one more feature is uh, the construction of the base is actually a sandwich of two one-inch plates. There is some double-sided foam tape connecting those two plates. The purpose of all this is to reduce or inhibit or attenuate vibrations that are transmitted to the base from the top, then bouncing back up through the top. Uh, the same thing was done with the mount here and here and here so we basically have a a double layer sandwich construction of foam tape to attenuate vibrations that are transmitted up and down throughout the framework of the gun while the gun is firing. Uh, obviously a PPC uh, doesn't have a long barrel time, about one and a quarter milliseconds, but most of these uh, changes were made to accommodate a rimfire barrel. In other words, this little V block was put on here to do some rimfire testing. And the, there was no way the rimfire barreled action would shoot properly on a conventional hard bolted together uh, railgun. We also use the foam tape here and here again to attenuate vibration. Unfortunately I quit the center fire bench rest game long ago and never tested uh, this anti-vibration stuff with a center fire barreled action. Uh, this is my old center fire gun that used to be hard bolted together everything but some of these features you might want to look at while you design and build your own miracle rail gun. Uh, one other thing I'll pull the top here and show you the rails. The rails on this gun are basically carbide flat stock. It was finished ground at 600 grit. And the reason I chose the carbide was the fact that it's pretty well impervious to most common uh, embedding agents getting into the rails such as sand and grit. You can scratch it, but it's a lot better than, than uh, stainless steel. And here's part of that recoil system. Pretty simple. It's just a, a little spring, a little loop here that you can adjust the length on to position it. And then I've got an old sash, sash bearing here for the, the loop around on it. The rail points are Teflon impregnated Delrin. Uh, I fooled around with ordinary Delrin and Torlon and nylon and copper and brass. Carbide even had carbide on carbide. That's really wild. Uh, all of them work, but I kind of settled on this uh, Teflon impregnated Delrin. Well, good luck on your projects.